today I am going to show you how to take a color inspiration piece like this one and turn it into a project like this one. So today I'm doing something a little bit different for my video and I wanted to talk a little bit about um, working with color inspiration and um, a little bit about generally how to work with color. There's been a lot of people asking on the forums and such um, how we kind of go about selecting our colors and coming up with unique color combinations so things don't get boring. So I selected this inspiration photo and um, if you go back to the blog post um, that I've created today, I've got several um, photos like this already dissected for you. But this is the one that I picked to work with and when I look at this photo, the colors that I picked up from it were Sweet Blush, Lemon Tart, Melon Berry, Canyon Clay, and new leaf. So in general, when I'm getting ready to start a new project and I want to work from a color inspiration piece like this, I start by pulling out all the ink and cardstock in those colors. So that's what I've done here. I've got Sweet Blush, Melon Berry, uh, Lemon Tart, Canyon Clay, New Leaf, and then I've got Vintage Cream in here as a neutral. And I also um, pulled out the inks as well. Now. I'm not really um, well versed here in creating a card from scratch on video, so you'll have to bear with me as we work through this, but a lot of people said they wanted to see how this went from scratch, so I'm just going to kind of jump in here with two feet. Um, I've pulled a few stamp sets that I decided I wanted to work with. Um, I'm working with uh, Fillable Frames number 10. Um, I just was kind of getting a vibe from the picture, basically. Um, I'm also working with um, Flower Fusion right here, Flower Fusion number 2. And I've also got um, Modern Wood Mats. And I also have a little um, a stamp I'm using from a little argyle, so I'm kind of just mixing all of this up and um, and just kind of getting creative with it. So I cut a piece of sweet blush cardstock as my background. If as you can see from the inspiration photo, the background is pink, and then all the other colors are layered on top of that. So that's what I'm kind of taking my inspiration from. I'm going to start by inking this stamp, this background stamp from a little argyle with melon berry ink. As I showed you before, I just kind of keep all of the colors that I wanted to use in this project. I just pull all the ink pads and cards off and then I just kind of start um, mixing and matching everything. So I'm going to stamp this background here and I'm going to cover here. Just working my way up to the top of my card base. Just like so. And I didn't mention this, but I like working um, with large background stamps on top of the polymer mats we sell to use um, with dyes. Um, it gives you a little bit of extra cushion, gets allows you a little bit more consistency with your ink coverage. So um, I left this edge um, plain. Um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to incorporate that, rate that into my design, but to be perfectly honest, I'm just kind of lazy to go back in and do that edge, and I kind of um, just kind of like how that looks. It looks a little bit unique. So um, I took the liberties of doing some die cutting after I had selected my colors, and I just thought I would show you what I did here. Um, I took one of the turning a new leaf dies and I cut out a couple of those with um, with new leaf cardstock and then I I also took um, 
a friend, the friendly flower die, and die cut that from Canyon Clay, um, Melon Berry, and Lemon Tart. And I took the Flower Fusion um, number two die, and I cut that from the same colors as well. So I just kind of have all those laid out to kind of play around with here. I am going to go ahead and kind of play around with creating my focal points. I've got um, the outline flower stamp here from um, Flower Fusion number two. And I'm just going to kind of go in with each ink color and stamp it on itself. So I'm going to use Melon Berry ink here to stamp on the Melon Berry die cut flower. Like that. And I've got Canyon Clay here. And I don't even know if I'm going to use all of these yet at this point, but um, I'm just kind of getting them ready so I can play around with the colors and see what I can come up with when I'm creating. Okay, so I have those three stamped. And... I'm thinking about adding this to the centers, but let me see here. Yeah, I think I, I think I do like that. I'm wondering if it's going to be a bit too much, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a try and see what how it looks here. And actually, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I think I'm going to do that in Versamark. So let me get my Versamarking pad here. So I grabbed my Versamark pad. The reason why I'm deciding to use Versamark rather than the um, regular ink color is that I want to maintain the little circle dotted center on the flower. I think it's important to the design of it. But I still want to add a little bit. So the Versamark will be slightly lighter and you'll still maintain the flower center there. That is why I picked that. All right, so each of those has a little bit of a center now. Now, I'm looking at these larger flowers and kind of how I can mix things up here. And if I even want to use these, is the question. I'm going to kind of arrange these with the green and kind of see how I might want to play around with this. I may just use those three there, possibly. Okay, so I've got those. Now, I die cut um, fillable frames number 10 and also um, a matte stack here in vintage cream. And I'm going to kind of get my sentiment and focal point frame going here um, to help me decide how I want to arrange the flowers. So I've got this wood mat for modern wood mat stamp set and I'm inking it up with fine linen. This was not one of the original ink colors that I pulled but I like the neutralness of it and I think it will go well with the rest of my project. I'm going to grab my little mat again because I like having that underneath my stamps when I'm doing a large image like this. Okay, stamp this down. I'm going to go ahead and lift that up. 
And I actually did not stamp the center very well on that, but I'm going to be covering that up with this, I believe, anyway. So I'm just going to continue going with the flow here. Now, looking at all my colors and kind of looking at how this is going to go on the background, just to try and see how this is going to go here. I'm thinking that I'm going to stamp the sentiment in the canyon clay color. Since the background's got sweet blush and melon berry in it already, I just feel like we need to carry over the canyon clay a little bit over into the sentiment block. So I'm going to grab the canyon clay ink and I'm going to actually do the frame for this fillable frames number 10 in canyon clay. It's one of my favorite stamp set frames. Okay. So we have that. And I like how if you take away all of the other elements, I've got several of our main colors that we pulled from the um, inspiration photo. We've got the melon berry, sweet blush, and canyon clay. So now I'm going to pull out a sentiment. I'm using the happy birthday sentiment um, from Beautiful Butterflies. And I've decided that I'm going to stamp it in dark chocolate. I'm using fine linen in the project already, and I feel like cane and clay and fine linen are both kind of more of in the browns family, earth tones. So I decided to use a neutral dark chocolate for the sentiment. I'm going to stamp that into the middle of my frame. Okay, so now we have that, that created. So I'm really liking how this is looking so far. Um, I'm going to now kind of start playing around with the leaves and the different flowers that I have. Um, I've already die cut and try to make this work um, visually speaking and everything. So I think I'm thinking I want to layer some of the flowers underneath um, the frame. It's good to carry the cane and clay um, over here more towards the background and I do like the way that melon berry looks on the canyon clay but we don't have enough lemon tart mixed in yet so I want to make sure that that is added in too now when I start getting to this point in my design I start paying attention to my rule of threes I've talked about this before on my blog um, but I like to have three points of color um, within a project. I think it helps it to be more cohesive and um, it just it just helps the overall visual um, factor of the project. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, I've got uh, the cane and clay in the frame. I've got cane and clay in this large flower. So that's only two. Um, I've got melon berry in the background and melon berry on this flower and that's two and right now I only have one lemon tart so I'm sitting here thinking how can I get that third element of terracotta tile how can I get an additional element two elements of lemon tart and I still need one more of melon berry so I've got these other flowers that I've die cut here and Looking at this and I'm kind of liking how that's going. I'm going to take this leaf out and I think I'm going to end up cutting the leaves up now that I'm looking at everything. So I've got one, two, three canyon clay. I have one, two melon berry and two lemon tart. I pulled out a couple buttons here. And I've also um, punched out half-inch circles of the colors, thinking of 
you know, how I can continue to play around with my colors here. And I'm thinking I'm gonna I might just go ahead and cover up my centers. I don't really want to use buttons. I'm not really liking the way that looks. But see if I somehow incorporate these cardstock circles, I'll have one, two, three melon berry, and I'll have one, two, three lemon tart. So I think I'm going to just try to make that work. I'm just going to start adhering things together. I know this is going to be popped up on top, but I know this is going to be solid together. So I'm going to adhere this together like that. And I'm going to kind of just use my fingernails a bit to curl up the edges. Like that. I'm going to do the same thing with the large flower. Okay, so I've got that one done. Uh, curl this one up a bit. I'm going to adhere these together. I'll do the same thing here. And move this one up a bit too. Okay, so I've got all of my flowers here. Now for the leaves, like I said earlier, I thought I was going to end up snipping these apart. So I am going to go ahead right now and kind of cut this apart. I just want a touch of green. If you look at the inspiration photo, there's just a little tiny bit of green in the photo. It's mostly all of those pretty neutral yellows and pinks together. So that's why I'm just going to cut this up and have, have just a punch of the colors. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of start adhering everything into place. I'm going to go ahead and put this frame down here. And I'm letting it overlap um, the edge of the argyle pattern where we stopped stamping it. I'm going to adhere this yellow flower underneath. And I just letting that overhang the edge a little bit. This block right here measures three and three quarters by five inches, so I know when I put that on an A2 card, I'll have a little bit of space to work with around the exterior edge for it to overhang. I'm going to cut a small piece of foam tape here, and I'm going to <coughs> add that on top and this is going to be added completely underneath so I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive I'm going to put that there and this yellow flower is going to be popped up as well so I'm going to put a little piece of tape on the back of it I'm just going to kind of overlap that right there. Okay, so I've got all my flowers officially arranged. And now I've got my leaves. And I'm going to make sure that I've got three pops of the green color. So I'm just going to kind of start sticking these around the project. Okay. 
one spot I want to have two of these leaves together as one pop of color. I'm feeling it's kind of plain up there. So I'm debating on where these should go exactly. I'm kind of liking this. I think that allows a good flow. If you see, there's a triangle with the greens. One, two, three. I've already pulled out all of my cardstock colors. As I showed you in the beginning, that's what I always do. I just start laying my focal point onto my, the different card base options. So here it is on Melonberry, and I'm really liking that. It kind of has a neutralized feel to it, more monochromatic. And here is Lemon Tart, and I'm really not caring for that at all. It's a little bit too much yellow. The Canyon Clay looks good, but I feel like this one flower is just being thrown a little bit off balance with that color. I've got New Leaf, and I don't care for that at all. Um, I think it takes away too much from the leaves. I like the leaves popping out from the page a bit better. Here's Craft, and I like that, but I'm thinking that I like the Melon Berry better. Here's cream. I feel like that washes it out a bit too much. And I do have sweet blush as well, but I'm pretty sure that that's not going to be a good option. I'm not really a big fan of that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go forward with doing a melon berry card base. So here I've cut my melon berry card base. And I am adhering that to the front, the focal point to the front of the card, and there is my completed project.